Um, I've raised my opposition to this amendment previously, or a version of this amendment previously, and for once I was planning to keep out of the gender identity argument, although I do agree with the noble Lady Baroness Noakes in her, um, both her speech and amendment. But I do feel I also have to make some response to the noble Lord Carlyle, who says that the concept of gender is causing no problems in the law or amongst the judges. Well, I'm delighted for them, but let me tell you, the concept of gender is causing huge numbers of problems for many women. The judge advises that what we need to do is to talk to young people who have trans people included amongst their friends. I would just like to point out that I have trans people included amongst my friends, and I spend a huge amount of time talking to young people. There is not just one view on this, there are lots of views on this, and I think one of the problems we have to recognise is that open debate on the topic of gender and trans issues is often chilled for fear of being accused of hate or bigotry, and ironically, most of the misogynistic abuse that I've received and other women have received in recent months and years has been on this issue for being gender critical, ironically. But I want to go back to what I was going to say, which is that my opposition to this amendment is based on a key concern that I think we have to need to avoid uh, fueling a narrative of fear that posits the idea that terrible and unimaginably horrific but rare incidents of sexual violence and murder are part of a continuum of widespread misogynistic attitudes. This can too easily elide everything from online trolling, catcalling, to rape and domestic abuse, all under the label of misogyny, hatred of women. There's little limited time because we have very major things to discuss, so um, to focus in. I appreciate that the noble Baroness New Love's amendment explicitly distinguishes between sexual violence crimes and other forms of crime that may be enacted by misogynistic intent, or, uh, um, and, and neither is an attempt to create any new criminal offences, but is more concerned with the police recording and reporting the number of crimes motivated by hostility towards sex, sometimes gender. This, we are told, is crucial to identifying the patterns of behaviour and targeting police resources so that they, we can build up a national picture of violence against women and girls. However, hate crime legislation generally, and echoed in this amendment, um, in fact means that the data collected is based almost entirely on subjective perceptions and will not allow an accurate picture to emerge at all. The amendment itself talks of a reported crime in which, one, the victim or any other person perceived the alleged offence at the time of or immediately before or after the offence as demonstrating hostility or prejudice based on sex, or B, that the victim or any other person perceived the crime to be motivated wholly or partly by hostility or prejudice towards persons who are of a particular sex. So this amendment won't help us understand data as fact, but just more how victims, or for that matter any other third party, subjectively sees either the motivation of the alleged offenders or of the crime. To compound the issue, there's no legal or formal definition of hostility. So the CPS suggests that we use the everyday understanding of the word which includes, and there's a list, ill will, spite, contempt, prejudice, unfriendliness, antagonism, resentment, dislike. So this can only lead to the possibility of an ever-widening set of crimes being badged as misogynistic, but the only evidence being subjective. And of course the practical outcomes can be severe and serious as the amendment will alter sentencing. And this means that essentially if someone thinks or feels that, that, that someone else is being hateful uh, towards them or, 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 and that hostility is based on sex in the carrying out of crime, 
um, in, and that explains their offence, that that is enough to mean that the person could be locked up in prison for longer. And there's more insidious punishments. It might mean labelling more behaviour, more and more behaviour, of, and we know we mean especially men and boys, as misogynistic, reputationally destroying once determined that those people are bigots who hate women, according to this uh, categorisation, without that necessarily being grounded in reality. And if you read the campaign literature sent out ahead of this discussion, this label, um, 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 hostility via sex, can be used to infer far more than hostility. Um, however minor the original crime, it is, if it's labelled as a sex-based hostility, we're told that it is a slippery slope, an almost inevitable slippery slope, that this is the kind of person who will carry out, if they're not stepped, the most heinous crimes of rape, sexual violence and murder. And meanwhile, hope not hate sent around a, a, a missive saying that uh, this kind of sex hostility is a slip road to far-right extremism. Finally, my lords, the Fawcett Society claims this amendment will, quote, give women protection from crime and will help ensure the safety of women and girls. And I would just like to assert here that it won't. If anything, it could well distract the police from the practical, difficult, but essential work of on the ground, patrolling streets, painstaking investigations, etc., and the courage to see through those investigations and prosecutions. And it might take valuable resources from the police away from policing if they get tangled up in the reporting and monitoring of stats and data that I don't think, as I've shown, is reliable. And when one considers one of the most gross examples of abuse of women and girls, such as the grooming gangs that have taken place in parts of the northwest of England, they wouldn't have been helped one iota by calling those crimes misogynistic. The shameful neglect of investigating or prosecuting that instance was surely not about whether this was seen as driven by hostility to sex. So I think this amendment avoids the real problem, is tokenistic and will not help women at all. Yeah.